They're terrific, aren't they? Michael Jackson and his brothers. Jermaine, Tito, Marlon, Randy, and Jackie. Hi, I'm Alan Potash. I work for Pepsi-Cola. And some of the work I do involves me with people like the Jacksons who became part of our Pepsi advertising history a while back by starring in what turned out to be a couple of the most talked about commercials we or anybody else ever made. Now in the process, they helped launch a whole new generation of Pepsi-Cola advertising. I bet you remember this one. You know, popular music has become an important marketing tool for Pepsi-Cola, which is why I find myself working with personalities like uh, Lionel Richie or groups like Menudo. All of which can be pretty exciting stuff. Well, here we are in Hollywood, the home of sound stages and sets, actors, extras, agents, and occasionally chaos, crisis, and confusion. Of course, that's another story. After all these years, I still haven't figured out why they call the people who make up actors' faces artists, but the ones who make up their hair are only stylists. Come to think of it, why they need two people for the job in the first place. But I guess that's Hollywood. In any event, it's really not what most advertising is about because the making of most of the commercials you see is a process in which more happens off screen than on. And it involves a lot more grit than glitter. What I want to show you today is how commercials get made and in the process show you a little of how advertising and advertising agencies work. Remember I said the Jackson commercials are now part of Pepsi's advertising history? Well, here's some more. You see, before we created our new campaign, The Choice of a New Generation, we aired what was basically one campaign for 20 years. This, of course, was our original Pepsi Generation advertising, which associated Pepsi with people of all ages who were young at heart, people who live life to the fullest. Now, here's a typical Pepsi Generation commercial. We call it Mud football. You're the Pepsi generation. It's a whole new game you're facing. Let's begin. Hey, it's mud you're in. It's gonna be Pepsi now. Oh, what a time. It's gonna be Pepsi now. What a time for a living. It's gonna be, gotta be, gonna be Pepsi now. It's what Pepsi's giving. It's gonna be, gotta be, gonna be. Looks like fun, doesn't it? Well, it is. And it's also work, planning, preparation, details, discussions, deciding what the commercial should say, who it should say it to, and how it should be said. And it's a hundred other painstaking and sometimes very painful steps that eventually go into the making of a commercial like that one. The whole process starts in meetings and discussions where we evaluate the need for new advertising. Maybe because our research has uncovered something, maybe a problem with brand or advertising awareness, or it might tell us that consumers' interests or preferences are changing, which can affect the advertising. That's why consumer research goes on continually, both here at the company and at our agency. Well, I was wondering if uh, you'd ever get around to mentioning us. Hey, would I forget you guys, Phil? No way I'd let you. Come on in here and sit down. Meet Phil Dusenberry, Executive Creative Director of BBDO, the advertising agency for most of our products. Phil is one of the guiding geniuses behind Pepsi advertising. Phil, I was just about to describe uh, how a television commercial like Mud Football is created. Why don't you do it from your point of view? Okay, Alan. After we've agreed that we need new commercials, and equally important, what we want them to accomplish, I give the assignment to several of our copy and art teams of the agency. Then for a week or two, they'll generate ideas that match the assignment we call these commercial concepts. And they'll develop a lot of these concepts because let's say we want to produce a total of three commercials. We'll probably review dozens of ideas before deciding on the ones that we'll present to the client. 
that's when I get involved I again. In Phil and his people uh, present a number of concepts on storyboards. Uh, the storyboards illustrate the action that will take place in the finished commercial. We review each concept carefully, frame by frame. Occasionally, if we want to be absolutely certain that our concepts will work the way they're supposed to, we'll pre-test them with consumers. And finally, after what could turn out to be any number of meetings and discussions, we agree on the ones we want to produce. It sounds a lot easier when you tell it, Alan. <laughs> I'm just hitting the highlights, Phil. Speaking of which, why don't you describe what happens when we're finally ready to begin production? Well, next we take two important steps. First, we select the director and the film production company who are best suited to shoot the particular commercial. The second step, which for Pepsi is always very important, is to produce our music. Because in Pepsi advertising, we use music to set the pace or the mood of a commercial. And since this is an active, exciting, athletic spot, that's the kind of music track we'll create. To do that, we'll work with a composer, like my good friend Peter Cofield. Well, generally, I'm approached by the agency. You know, it's a complete surprise to me when I go to the agency uh, to do any product, you know, as to what the project is going to be. They come in with uh, concepts or concepts and lyrics, and they just ask me to uh, develop a piece of music in 60 seconds or 30 seconds. It's a celebration short records, small songs. Instead of doing the uh, typical, you know, jingle, you make it a piece that goes somewhere. So people hear it, they identify with the song as being a song instead of a jingle. So that's the way I approach it. It's gonna be, gotta be, gonna be Pepsi now. You know, Peter's a very talented guy. Besides having created some of the best known advertising music around, Peter's composed a lot of popular music, too. He's recorded two albums, and he often works with uh, major record labels like CBS and Atlantic. Well, we're almost ready to film the commercial. We've gotten all of our approvals, including clearance from our legal department. The production company has found a suitable location for shooting. Budgets have been calculated and approved. Have I forgotten anything, Phil? No, except for the one group of people without whom there wouldn't be a commercial. It must mean the cast. I didn't forget, Phil, I was just saving that for last because I think it's one of the most interesting parts of the whole process. Yeah, you I see, once we've approved a commercial for production, while everything else is going on, perfect. so is casting. Perfect. It starts when the creative people, including the BBDO producer, tell the casting director the kind of people they need for a particular commercial. Then, uh, out of what can be hundreds of possibilities, they may invite the ones they think are best suited for the commercial to appear on a casting tape, or even come to the agency for a live audition. Sometimes casting can take weeks, because very often, just the right look isn't enough, or the right voice. We may want a particular kind of talent, or an athletic skill, and it's that combination of requirements that sometimes complicates the problem. But eventually we find our cast, and then there's nothing left to do but get on the plane and go to where we're going to shoot mud football, Jacksonville, Florida. It took eight trucks, 10 tons of equipment, countless cases of Pepsi-Cola, and a mountain of ice to keep it cool. And oh, yeah, that's right, an awful lot of mud. And it takes patience, because while filming is an exciting business, it can also be a tedious business. You wait if the weather turns foul. You wait if the equipment breaks down. You wait while camera angles are meticulously planned because catching people in the act of being natural and spontaneous, what we call magic moments, that's no piece of cake, as any film director can tell you. Like this one. I love film. I'm always looking for a film answer to advertising problems, advertising film problems. And, uh, I love finding the, the, the atmosphere that's appropriate, the spirit that's appropriate, and a lot of that's my focus, my attention as a filmmaker. Here we go, and action, let's go! I like the sense of naturalism. I guess if, if I have a forte, I call it poetic naturalism. It's, it's the sense of real seeming people slightly removed from the everyday dross and, and taken to a little bit more poetic place. A, a a place of spirit, a place of feeling, a place of celebration. 
I can tell you why those people Joe was talking about seem so real. They are real. Because whenever we film a Pepsi commercial, along with our professional cast, we use an awful lot of people who just happen to live near the location where we're filming. Is it fun to be in a Pepsi commercial? Well, I think the answer is usually yes. Listen to these kids from Jacksonville and you decide. Muddy. <laughs> just feels muddy and disgusting and I want to go get it cleaned up. I really enjoy it and glad to have the chance. I didn't expect it to be this cold. It's freezing out there when you're playing football in that mud. Well, for one thing, it's got me pretty muddy. Uh, it's got me cold. I've had a great time. I uh, never forget it. <laughs> Phil, I think a critic would probably label that a mixed review. Absolutely. Alan, let's talk a little about the last major step in the filmmaking process, editing. When we finally finished filming Mud Football, we still didn't have a commercial, although we left Jacksonville with about 25,000 feet of film. That's an awful lot of film, especially when you realize that only the best 45 feet are used in the final 30-second commercial. You know, there's an expression in the movie business for someone who uh, gets a part in a film but isn't seen in the final version because he's been edited out. It's called the face on the cutting room floor. Well, this is the cutting room. This is the yeah, floor. That's and out of our 25,000 feet of film, that's where 24,955 feet will end up. Which is why editing is time-consuming, demanding, and highly creative. Phil and his people spent countless hours reviewing the film, analyzing it, cutting it together in different ways, selecting from the dozens of takes of each scene, close-ups, wide shots, dollies, zooms, pans, until finally they've got the 45 feet. That's the 30 seconds of film that worked best. Say, just out of curiosity, let me show you the 30 second version of Mud Football and see if you can find Mike Smith. Here goes. I'm not sure the average viewer would spot Mike, but I'll bet he spotted himself when he saw it on television, and so did his family and his friends. And you know, I can almost guarantee you that, just like most of the kids in that commercial, I'll remember mud football for a long, long time. To tell you the truth, as much as I enjoy working with these guys, I think I have more fun working with the real, everyday people who have always been a part of our Pepsi advertising, and I hope always will be because it's people who bring the spirit energy and the vitality to our new advertising just as they have to 20 years of pepsi generation advertising and we've got the film to prove it watch
think it works. Don't you? Thanks for watching, and as we say in the film business, that's a wrap.